right, everyone. Welcome to another great webinar that we're offering. Today, I've got two awesome guests. A third one coming on. I think I sent them the wrong link, so my bad. But I'm going to introduce everyone here. We've got Kevin Markarian, who's a really, really good friend of mine, uh, probably one of my best friends. He's up north in San Francisco. He's a, an amazing real estate agent. Your team and brokerage, what, $100 million last year? Yeah, right around there, yep. All right, and that's out of San Francisco. So he rocks it, and he uses VAs. That's why I have him here. And then we've got Andre Polston. Is that right? Did I pronounce your name right, Andre? You did. All right, Andre and I know each other a little bit. This is actually the first time I'm actually seeing him, I, which is cool. We've talked on the phone. He works for My Outdesk, and My Outdesk is a company that – focuses on hiring virtual assistants for you. They train them, they have them there in-house at the Philippines. And today we're all gonna talk about how to hire a virtual assistant, how to train them, and what to expect. And the cool thing is, oh, is his Chase, is Chase Olarte, is that his name or no? Yeah. Got it, all right, so we've got Chase, I'm gonna just promote him to a panelist right now. He is a virtual assistant, right? Do I get that right, Andre? Correct. All right, yeah. let me get Chase. I'm going to unmute him right now. Chase, can you hear us? Loud and clear, Tristan. Awesome, man. I love it. <laughs> your camera only shows me half of your head, so I can't <laughs> oh, see your nice hairdo. Let me uh, scoot back a little bit. I like your headset, man. What do you have there? Steel Series, the best in the game. What is that, Steel Series? Yeah, Steel Series. It's it's more for gamers. Oh, Steel Series, nice. Yeah, but it's pretty good. It's, uh, 3D sound and everything. So I get I love it, man. Everything. <laughs> I love it. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I've been using a virtual assistant for close to three years now, and the very first virtual assistant that I chose was from my outdesk. That's why I brought them on. There are a lot of other choices on here, and that's why I have Kevin, because I know, Kevin, you don't use my app desk. You have your own virtual assistant. So I wanted to show people the, your options, what you have, what to expect, and, and then we'll go from there. Kevin, can you tell me how you use your virtual assistants before we kick it off? Yeah, sure. So, um, so basically, ISAs, that acronym is used very often these days, Inside Sales Associate. Um, and real quick, I have used my outdesk, um, and I think it's great. Um, but the way that I use inside sales associates today, basically they are, um, they've like replaced what I had been doing for a long period of time as an individual agent before I, I started a team. Um, and so basically they go through, you know, we're generating lots of leads. Um, they're responding to those leads. They're pre-qualifying, and then we're assigning those people to agents on our team. Um, they it also prior to starting a team, I had an inside sales associate work with me to help me generate mo more appointments for myself. So it really just depends on where you are in your business. At, but at the end of the day, it's really about leverage and 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 giving ourselves more time to focus on dollar-producing activities where you have someone like Chase, you know, a skilled professional that can basically do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and allow you to get out there and, you know, meet with more people and have more appointments and close more tra transactions at the end of the day. Nice, nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good, good answer, man. So I've been using a virtual assistant for everything you can imagine in real estate. I thought at the beginning, why not bring in a virtual assistant to help my main ISA and to help them with data input, maybe some follow-up calls. That's how I brought them in. And then I hired a marketing one. That one didn't work out too well. So we took that one out and hired another virtual assistant as an ISA. I think the biggest misconception though is that when you hire someone that's a virtual assistant that's outside of the United States or outside of a, a mainly English speaking country, you're going to have someone that has a thick accent or someone that's going to mess up somebody's name. But I mean, we've got Chase right here. Chase, you sound like you're my neighbor, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's true. That's true. The, the misconception. Um, well, there's, there's hundreds like me who speak like me 
and we're very comfortable. We, we speak the language day in and day out. So it's no problem with us. That's awesome, man. I love it. I, I love that. So let's start off by, by going over how to hire a virtual assistant because the first time I hired a virtual assistant, I had a hard time finding, first of all, I had a hard time finding where to hire them from. Um, where do I go? What do I do? Uh, so I'm going to start with Andre. Andre, I, I know you work for my out desk, so you're going to tell us just go to my out desk, which is awesome. No, um, but maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe you, you won't. So, so tell me, hiring a virtual assistant, it's not as easy as it sounds because it was complicated for me. Tell me what, what you think a, an agent out there should do and how they, how they should go about hiring someone. I think that's a great question, and you might be surprised where I start with it, but the first place that you have to start when you're hiring a virtual assistant, and this comes from us currently having actively have, we have over 1,500 virtual assistants currently actively placed. So I'm just looking at the data, the common patterns, right, of what works, what doesn't work. The first place to start is actually to know what the heck you want from a virtual assistant. Like you have to have it clearly identified what you want from them. And Kevin probably, for example, in his business knows exactly what he wants from every seat or er on his team, right? He knows what kind of results or what kind of outcome that he wants. Oftentimes, uh, we see real estate agents make a list of all the, you know, maybe make a list of frustrations or maybe they're just so busy and they're like, man, I need a virtual assistant or I need an assistant to handle all this stuff for me. And so they run out and they try to hire somebody. And that can oftentimes be a recipe for failure because we're in a business that's a roller coaster, right? Cyclical, up and down, up and down, especially All when you're time. building it. So during a really peak time and you're really busy, you go hire somebody. But if you don't have a clear idea of what you want out of them, if you don't have a clear idea of how they're going to be profitable, if you don't have a clear idea for how you're going to train them and manage them, they're not going to be with you. You're going to get rid of them. You're going to cut them when you're on the other side of that roller coaster going back down, right? So my first. My first step, my first piece of advice is know exactly what you want out of them. Have your outcome, your ideal outcome in mind. So, um, Andre, if it's somebody new, newer that doesn't have a team, is is maybe two, three years in the business, and they're doing they're doing pretty well for themselves. They're closing maybe about twenty five transactions a year. Okay, and, and they want to hire a virtual assistant. What would you say is the best thing to hire first? What position would that be? The best, the one that we, I won't even say my perspective. I'll just tell you what we see statistically work the best for first time hires. And the thing that typically works the best for first time hires is the back office, the back of office uh, administrative tasks that keep you away. Like Kevin said, they keep you away from revenue producing activity, right? Right now, the U.S. national average for what is an hour of pro dedicated prospecting worth to an agent is the national average right now is $1,800. That means the national average right now for a real estate agent for dedicated prospecting, you should be making around $1,800 an hour. If you're not able to do that, you're losing that money, losing that opportunity. For most agents, if you're doing 20 to 25 deals, and like you're saying, you've been in the business for two to three years, everything from social media marketing to listing input, transaction coordination, any of that stuff where you think like, oh, I got it. Oh, I do it really fast. If you really take a step back and look at how much of your valuable time that eats up throughout the day, how much of your evenings that eats up, how much of your weekends that eats up, how much of that time does it fracture for you where you can't get into a good flow for two, three hours and, and have that blocked out, highly, re you know, highly revenue productive activity in place, that's what you need to hire for. You need to get everything off your plate that isn't producing revenue oh, if, that, if it's a first hire. All right, so then if you're busy with paperwork, right? Saying, hey, I just can't handle this. Maybe instead of hiring a transaction coordinator, you hire a virtual assistant to do all that paperwork for you. But here's the thing. I'm going to have to train this virtual assistant to do all of the paperwork for me, like on contracts, the systems that I use, like dot loop, everything. And that's a hassle for me, right? Right. So, I mean, what, what do you guys do about it? Well, let me give you the answer that I can give to the marketplace, regardless of whether they use my app desk or not, because I believe in just being fair and balanced. And then I'll, and then if it's okay, I'll, I'll also then give the shameless, you know, the, the shameless my out desk answer. But I first want to just give the just a, a market answer, a marketplace answer. Um, 
typically, typically most vendor tools, like you mentioned, dot loop, they typically have training programs in their software in their tool, like video series or something of that nature. And so typically what you can do is you can hire somebody and for a short period of time, you're going to have to pay them to go through that training material if they're already not familiar with it. But typically most vendors do have training material that comes with their tool or their resource. Not always, but often. Um, the other thing that I know that is possible is you know, um, there's, there's platforms out there where when you buy a tool, they can actually, you can actually as an add-on purchase, maybe workflows or templated processes. Um, also, I do know that oftentimes a broker, your managing broker or an association can have scope, you know, standard operating procedures pre-written for you or workflows pre-written and pre-built and pre-templated. You could probably go do a Google search and find these things. Um, oftentimes the issue necessarily isn't even as, there's a distinction between training and between just knowing how to do what you want them to do. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, you want to have a specific scope of work or like a standard operating procedure in place of how you want them to do that process for you, right? Step one, step two, step three, step so four. So if I'm hiring, if I'm hiring somebody to be an ISA for me, right? Right. I'm going to have a step-by-step -step process of what I expect, right? As soon as the lead comes through. Exactly. You know what? So it doesn't have to be complicated. When I say, when I say standard operating procedure that can give people, you know, chills up and down their spine, especially if you're yeah. a high D or I and you're a salesperson, right? Um, look, it can be as simple as a checklist, but it yeah, doesn't have to be a really thorough is, checklist. The last thing I want to do, and I know Kevin is with me on this. The last thing I want to do is, is to actually train Right, the right. Virtual assistant. <laughs> right. I just and, don't know, want to do that whole hand holding, dude. I get it. I get well, it. That's, that's time consuming as well, right? I mean, that's that's part of the reason why we're hiring someone to help us with whatever it is that we're doing in the first place. Um, but I want to just want to jump in real quick, and I, and I want to say something about you know why hiring, why to hire someone, or or you know how, how why and how. Okay, first. Need to, you need to determine what it is that you are not good at, okay? What do you suck at? Or what do you, what do you not like to do? There's a lot of things I suck at. What are you not is able to do? Is that a fair do? question? <laughs> I suck at a lot of things too, which is why I have four ISAs and four inside sales. Yeah, you suck that's a lot then. That's, that's not really that. bad. So, uh, <laughs> so that's the first thing, right? We need to determine what it is that we don't want to do. We're not all prospectors. We're not all, you know, good at technology. We're not all data entry people, right? I mean, we shouldn't be doing some of these things. Um, I think you can have a successful career and not be a great prospector, right? You can have, maybe you're good at appointments, you're better at face-to-face. -face. So determine, first of all, what it is that you're not good at or what it is that you don't want to do or you can't do. And then, then, like Andre was saying, determine you know which route to take. So you can direct the, the person, the virtual assistant, appropriately so that they can give you the best return on your investment so you're not just wasting money and time um, as far as what to look for two words on that very important emotional intelligence that you can be in any country in the world you could be anywhere you can have the thickest accent you can have you know whatever if you if you've got emotional intelligence you know you can you can survive anywhere so that's really, really important. And hopefully we can get into, you know, the hiring process and how that works. But um, you really need someone that if you're doing the inside sales associate aspect of it, you're going to need someone that's got emotional intelligence and that's going to be able to think on their feet. Um, well, Kevin, I agree with you on that. I think emotional intelligence is, is, is really important. And it's part of the hiring process. But before I even get there to that point, I'm thinking as an agent or as anybody, you know, how much am I going to have to pay a, a virtual assistant? Because like I know now, let's say I'm in my second or third year or more. And I finally decided, okay, you know what? It's time to hire somebody because I'm freaking inundated. And how much am I going to have to pay somebody? Because I've seen virtual assistants out there that where you can pay as little as three bucks, right? Or maybe even a little bit less Two, there's no limit. I, I've seen, in the United States, I've seen just people being paid up to forty, fifty dollars an hour. All right. So, I mean, tell me about pay. What are you looking for in regards to pay? Because I know you and I are 
were pretty cheap, right? So, um, and, we want good, and we want to be good, and we want to have good results too at the same time while being cheap. So, um, Kevin, what, what do you do when it comes okay, down so, to cost? So we have, so on this, I would say it really depends, and I don't want to like avoid the question, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the answer. But it's gonna depend on your local market. Right. So it's going to depend on what, you know, in San Francisco, our pay is really high. Um, and we have a, we have people working in different parts of the, of the country and the world. Um, so really, you really just need to look and see what, you know, what. First of all, what area you're working in, but, you know, it can range, like you said, for us, anywhere between, you know, five to twenty dollars an hour. Um, and it just, again, depends. And, you know, finding. I think it's good to find someone that has experience in the real estate industry or has some kind of interest. In how do you find that person? Well, so like, for instance, for me, it was easy, right? Well, it was hard and easy. The hard part was this. I went around looking for a virtual assistant company, right? And then by chance, I found, uh, I was introduced to Daniel Ramsey, who owns my outdesk. And then he told me about it. I was like, oh, that sounds like, kind of what I need. I mean, what's the cost? So, I mean, Andre, what's the cost right now for a virtual assistant just who does, uh, let's see, transactions or just calls uh, for, for sale by owners or expires? What's the cost? Part-time is around $950 a month and full-time is seven, around $1,750 a month, $1,750 a month. How much was it for part-time? $950, $950 a month. $950, what does that break down to hourly, do you know? Off the top of my head, I don't, I don't remember that, but it's, uh, it's, if I remember correctly, it's sub $10 or it's right at $10 an hour. All right. So well, let's just say 10 even. I know with, with my desk part-time, I believe is uh, 20 hours. So 950 divided by what, 20 hours a week. That's what hundred hours. So yeah, there we go. There you could do the math. It's about 10 bucks. All right. All right. So a question that we have in regards to what Andre and Kevin were talking about, and that's, that's um, the virtual assistant hiring. What's the turnover rate? Do you guys see a turnover rate, Kevin? First, so with us, first of all, it's about it's really about empowering people. That's for me what's really important. And the way that we're going to retain, retain people is where we empower them. It's not only about being a virtual assistant with what we do. Is you know I'm doing this every single day. I know it's a grind and whatever it is that virtual assistants are doing. Um, so it's not just you know, this is your hourly rate. So we, there are bonuses that are available. There are um, other opportunities, like we're doing consulting now that's available that we're bringing other people in, like the, the virtual assistants and to allow them to take advantage of that as well. So let's um, say I hire, so, I hire somebody from my office because they're here and um, you help me train them. Is that what you're doing? Yes. So we, uh, we have a consulting um, company that we're, we've launched that we're helping people um, put together teams, train their ISAs, you know, how to find an ISA, how to keep people accountable. Um, so we're offering that as a service. And if anyone's interested, you know, reach out, but uh, we'll, we'll get your number at the end for that, man. Yeah. Um, so what do you see the turnover being Andre with in regards to two things? How often do you see real estate agents say, you know what? My virtual assistant sucks. I want out. And how often do you see virtual assistants decide to just leave? That's a great question. Uh, I'll start with the second one first. We very rarely ever see a virtual assistant throw up their hands and want to leave. Um, the number is so small that I wouldn't even have uh, any statistical data for that. Um, how often do we see an agent throw up their hands and want to leave? That's actually a loaded question, and the reason why is, is because it depends on how, how much volume and business the agent is doing and whether it's their first-time hire or not. So if you look at first-time hires, it's num it, the number is a little bit higher than if you look at somebody who already has two or three people on their team and they're yeah. looking to scale and continue to build and to add on. Um, the one advantage with my outdesk is that if you don't like your virtual assistant, for whatever reason they're not working out, we just simply swap them out and replace them with somebody else who's a better fit if we didn't quite capture what you were looking for initially, didn't quite understand what you were looking for. So it helps to really nip the whole hire and fire cycle that we have in our industry right in the butt, you know what I mean, and, and deal with that preemptively. 
Okay, now do you think hiring, one of the things that really resonated with everybody watching on both sides was the emotional intelligence comment that Kevin Markarian made. Okay. And, and I think the hiring process at the beginning, you know, if it's just up to me and I'm interviewing, let's say two or three people that I found on online mm -hmm. and I'm calling them up, now, I may not be as good as, as a system like you have to make sure that these people do have the right emotional intelligence. So can you tell me the process that agents go through when hiring a virtual assistant with you to make sure that we do have the proper emotional intelligence for VAs? Sure. Well, yes, I'll, I'll address that. And actually I'll, I'll talk a little about a couple of things that happened even before the real estate agent ever gets to talk with them because we do a lot of process prior to even ever introducing a virtual assistant or virtual professional to a real estate agent. So first and foremost, we check for something called the three E's which is expertise, experience, and employment. Are they experienced with the exact tasks that the agent is trying to hire them for? Mm -hmm. um, do they have expertise with any related tools or software or platforms that are related to that? Okay. And then have they been employed in that kind of job role before? All right. Right, so we know that they can do that kind of job. Um, then after that, they go through a background check an actual full background check. So we check for actual, you know, it, this is part of just checking for somebody's character and credibility and history that can speak to just who they are as a human. Uh, and then after that, we take them through a, a GWC process, get it, wants it, and is competent. Oh, nice. Right? Do okay. they get it? Do they get what the outcome is? That, do they get the outcome that the client wants? Do they understand that what Kevin needs is he needs this many minimum contacts per day that because his business needs that for X, Y, and Z, like, do they get that? Uh, do they want it? We check for just em emotional attitude and aptitude around, do they want this job? Will, you know, does it seem like they actually want to learn and apply themselves? And then we check for competency. After that, if the, if a candidate fits all those, all that criteria, then what we do is we look for personality match. So let's say that Kevin, for example, was somebody who maybe came to us and said, Hey, I want to hire an ISA for this type of role. Well, we and we look for some of the soft things that he wants, not just the hard skills, you know, telephone skills, num minimum number of dials, competency with certain pieces of software. We're also going to look for um, we're also going to look for, hey, you know, Kevin, what, what's your team culture? What's your personality style? How do you like to be communicated with? Right. We look for the different things that, that a client, potential client might need or want from another personality, not necessarily just the hard skills. Then what we do is we go out and we match. We would match Kevin or any prospective client with two to four candidates that fit that criteria. And we allow you to interview them on video. So unlike hiring on Upwork or through Craigslist, where oftentimes it's kind of a um, it's a digital relationship. You might not necessarily have a face-to-face -face relationship. With us, we make sure that you actually have screen time and face time with every one of our candidates. So you, get to, so you can get to know them on a personality level. After that, if it's a right fit and it's a right match from a skills perspective and from a gut perspective for, for the prospective client, then we have a 90-day onboarding process. During that onboarding process, it's not like we just take the virtual assistant and the client and we just set them off on a boat and hope that they make it. We actually have something called a de we have a dedicated coaching team where it's a, a client success coach and what they do is for the first 90 days especially they uh they, they they triangulate a lot between the client and the va asking the client are you getting what you want is this what you were looking for is what you were hoping for right and then they give feedback to the va if there's some sort of a difficult feedback that maybe the client doesn't want to give the va on a personal level but is willing to give to a third party so that the coach is making sure that the VA is performing on a skills-based perspective and on an emotional intelligence or personality perspective. Andrea, can I ask a question from the audience? Sure. Uh, Michael Patton is asking, uh, currently working with another Philippine VA firm, mm -hmm. my prospector claims she was restricted for using computer, uh, computer dialer phone yesterday due to government security concerns, you know, terrorist activity. Does that sound legit? 
power outage is usually legit. There's other issues that are legit, but actually let's go to Chase. That's a great question. And I'm not gonna say I know the exact answer to that because I've, I've never heard that one specifically before. But let's ask Chase since he's in the Philippines and he's on a dialer all the time. Chase. <laughs> Right. Well, I'm I'm here with you guys right now, so I, I don't see you know, <laughs> not encountering anything at all. But yeah, I've I've been dialing um, this week, especially I've I've heard of the news and whatnot, but I haven't encountered anything. Actually, I haven't even heard anything in our circle because we have a we have a couple of uh, support rooms here in my out desk, and I'm with the other virtual assistants as well, and it hasn't even come to our attention that it could be a problem. So I don't think it is. I don't think it's legit at all. All right. You know, That's a good I answer. On that, Tristan, um, yeah. we, have, we have people that work with us that are abroad as well. I've never come across any issue. Nothing. Uh, the, the only thing, and this is for everybody, the only thing I've come across is um, power outages. That's real. Yep. Right? I do have that. Um, sometimes. It's, it's not often. And maybe I haven't had it actually happen in like three months. So it's been pretty good on, on our, at least with, with my VAs. And then the other thing was I did try a virtual assistant company before that wasn't my out desk. I, I tried like three different ones. And one of the challenges that I had was they, and this is something you have to be careful of for anybody hiring a virtual assistant. And that's, they're gonna be working from their home most of the time. So you're going to have to make sure that their internet speed is, is, is adequate. You know, it's good, good enough so that you can, they can make good calls so you can hear them clearly. And also um, that they don't have any loud pets outside <laughs> because I had one virtual assistant that was working from her home who had chickens and roosters. Yeah, same here. So when, when I was, when I was uh, listening to the recordings and she was leaving messages for our clients, you would hear the roosters in the background. And I was like, uh, that's not going to work. Cause hey, at least it's organic. It is. It's totally organic. <laughs> but, you know, that was... Uh, well, just, that just person, a person like that, Tristan, probably shouldn't be making calls. They maybe could be doing data entry. Exactly. I, I shifted her to data entry. <laughs> the, the other thing I want to add to that list that we're recently discovering because, um, you know, there's a lot of, I don't know if the word firm is even, can even be applied accurately. There's a lot of companies or websites. Let me put it this way. There's a lot of websites popping up right here in the U S marketing to agents about premium being able to provide virtual assistant services and sourcing them from other countries. But the one thing you got to really look out for is, we're familiar with this phrase that I'm about to say in real estate, because we deal with it with real estate investors and wholesalers and bird doggers, and that's called daisy chaining a deal. You know what I mean? It's where one guy acts like he's got the deal, but he really doesn't, and it's a bunch of, you know, dependent oh, yeah. upon clauses, and it's a daisy chain deal. There's something called daisy, where we, we're jokingly referred to as daisy chaining virtual assistant services, where you think you hired a virtual assistant, but they actually are not your virtual assistant. They are talking to you, but they actually have another virtual assistant that they're paying less to than you're paying them to do the work, and they're just trying to get multiple accounts. And so in an issue where they have to be accountable or answer for something for your business, you end up getting a lot of these weird reasons why they can't interact with you, why they're busy. It's because they're not actually doing the work. So that's just something else to be really careful about and to be aware of and to be savvy too. Whereas in my out desk, you know, we're video chatting with all of our team every day. We talk with them every day. Like there's real human management and process in place. We have a real team in the U S and we have a real team in the Philippines that handles the human management and the accountability process. So that's Andre, just something else to be aware of. Andre, a question here from Charlie Carp. He says, this is, goes it back to what you were saying about the three, the three statements. Yeah, three E's. Um, yeah, th what was the third one? What was the third statement he's asking? Uh, it's expertise, um, experience, and employment. All right, right perfect. Yeah. That, For that example, one of the things that people don't know is that we, uh, we so we have a, we, we typically have a $397 setup fee at my out desk, right? To then go through the process of pulling the candidates, matching you with three, two to four of them, getting you the video interviews, et cetera. What most people don't know is that we then take that $397 setup fee and we pay it as a hiring bonus 
to the virtual assistants, oh. to the virtual assistant that gets placed. Nice. And that's one of the ways that we're able to actually recruit and pull away talent from other companies in the Philippines. You know, in the Philippines, what we call outsourcing here in the industry, in the Philippines is called a BPO, a business process outsourcer. And what you, when you think of them, you think of like Verizon, AT&T, all these customer service companies, right? Um, and so we oftentimes, what we're trying to do is we're trying to pull talent away from there and we, cause we pay them considerably more than what they get paid at, you know, um, at 18, you know, any of those other BP, BPO companies, I can't speak specifically to any other corporation. So I'm not saying that I know what their rates are, but I'm saying they, we pay them a, a much higher income or salary than what they are earning elsewhere. Um, and the way we can, one of the ways that we can poach them away and get that quality talent for our clients here in the U S is by actually paying a hiring bonus, recruiting them with the hiring bonus. Got it. So one question that we had was, uh, I think and I deleted it here because I answered it, but I wanted to reiterate it. And that's, um, there are some States where they don't allow a non-licensed uh, virtual assistant to make calls in regards to real estate. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides a, a virtual assistant making calls, there are other things they can do. I mean, one of the things that you and I, Andre, were talking about, uh, and I know, Kevin, I think you do it too, is uh, have them do Facebook lead ads, right? Mm -hmm. Have them do Facebook marketing, have them do editing on video, have them piece things together for you. Because I'm going to show, I'm going to share my screen here because there's a great video. Hold on, let me shift this over here. I was a little surprised at, at how awesome they did of a job here. Let me share the screen here. Where is it? Here we go. Tell me when you guys can see it. Can you see my screen there? It's just a blank screen. Uh, I can't see a screen, no. Okay, hold on. Share screen. Tell me if you can see it now. Yeah, I can see it. All right. Got it. This is a video. So most of you know we had an event last year i think it was last year miami beach and we had a little video made and my out desk made it for us and this is a two two a minute video geez very small but this is what they did i thought it was really good um yeah that's good i remember this yeah they pieced it together so quickly and i was like whoa you guys did a a really really good job on this impressive we can't so, hear the audio, but I'm assuming there's audio. Yeah, no, I know. It's all in my ears. Don't even worry about it. But there's great audio, great music. Uh, I'll post it up to the to the group here. I just wanted to show you that there are other things that your virtual assistants can do. You just have to really ask. I think that's Absolutely. the biggest thing. Ask. Can they do it? I mean, Kevin, what do you use them for besides ISA work, man? Data entry. So we use ZBuyer, and ZBuyer doesn't allow us to take to ex export the leads that come in and put them into our CRM. So we have people putting you know, data entry into our CRM from ZBuyer. Um, all kinds of things. I mean, you know, Craigslist ads. You can have someone that's just posting Craigslist ads for you all day. Like you're saying, lead ads. They're just, it's, they're, it's countless. I mean, there's like lots and lots and lots of different things. I know a lot of people use uh, virtual assistants for uh, TC work as well, which, is, which can be very beneficial. Um, so there's a lot of different things, but I want to I want to get into um, some steps to take um, when cho to to choose the right person. Uh, All right, and this, tell me. This is, this is uh this is really where it gets interesting because I mean I'm doing this every single day, um, and I want to just go back to let's just go back to the ISA thing because that's kind of like the main topic. Um, that people are talking about and and you can use this for data entry as well but i'm just going to tell you guys the steps that i take when hiring someone my outdesk is first of all a great company they provide amazing training um and this process can be used for any source so i mean if you're finding people on craigslist if you're finding them on upwork wherever you're finding them you can take these steps so the first thing that i do is first of all, you want to set up set up a call or a blue jean or a face to FaceTime meeting with the person to get a feel for them. What I like about my outdesk is they, well, my time that I've spent with them, is they've um, they provide you with like three people that you can talk to one after the other, which I think is great. But the thing that I want to that I look for again is going back to emotional intelligence. Is this person are they able to communicate? Are they able to 
respond quickly? Can they think on their feet? And yes, the, the face-to-face -face appointment is very, very important. But if you're using this, if you're working with this person and you want them to make calls for you, then you need to get on a phone call with them and you need to hear how they sound on the phone. And, and take this however you want, but if you're having someone making hundreds and maybe thousands of phone calls for you, this, that person needs to have like a pleasant voice, right? They need to have some, they can't sound like they're smoking, they smoke five packs a day or they can't sound like that. <laughs> They what if somebody like, likes that though, Kevin? Come on. I mean, they, if they like that it, that raspy good, bedroom they, voice. <laughs> they just have to have to, yeah, I mean, they just have. You want someone that's gonna that sounds pleasant, that's like happy, you know, that's smiling, that you can tell that they just they want to be there. That's that's key, and I know you look for that too, Tristan. Um, I do, I man. The voice, the voice is super important to me. And being super. able to connect on the phone is really important, and so so that that's important. Having a conversation and doing some role play. Um, and just kind of pretend that you're a buyer and the person and they're, you know, whatever. And, and they and you just go do some back and forth stuff and, and kind of challenge them a little bit to, to see if they can think on their feet, you know, and they're talking with you, you're their potential, potential employer, you know, their, their nerves are going to be going right. So if they can deliver for you, they're going to be able to deliver, you know, for many, many of those prospects that you have. So that's important. And then what I do is, uh, I have them, I set up a voicemail that I want them to leave for me. And I tell them exactly what to say on that voicemail. I write it out. And then I ask them to leave me a voicemail. Um, and I, and I basically, if there's a mistake that's made on that voicemail where they're not, where they say something wrong, where they leave a word out or whatever, um, they're, they're eliminated. Um, and the reason why I've done that, it sounds, it sounds really bad, but, we, when we've posted ads for virtual assistants, like we've had hundreds of people respond. So this is a great way to filter down to like the, the, the right people. So leaving that voicemail, asking them to leave it exactly the way that you um, have written it out is really important. And then, you know, these people, they're doing, if they're doing outreach for you, they're going to be sending messages. They're going to be sending emails. They're going to be sending text messages. So you need to yeah. make sure they know how to communicate properly. You know, are they using spell check? Are they like, using proper grammar, stuff like that. That stuff's important. It's important to me. I think it should be important. I think it's really important, especially if they're reaching out to our, our past clients and our sphere and we're having them get reviews for us, right? Because I, that's one of the things I use our VAs Absolutely. for. That's so, I, so I ask them, in addition to the voicemail and the conversation where we're doing role play and they're thinking on their feet and we're looking for that emotional intelligence, I ask, for them, I ask them to send me an email within – five with five sentences or less convincing me to hire them. So a couple of things going on there, right? So we, you know, we're, we have the sales part of it where they're kind of trying to convince me. And then at the same time, I'm looking for proper wording and stuff like that. So, and that's regardless of whether it's a person that's in a different country or whether they're in the United States, wherever they are, um, that stuff's important. And so when you, you, you've got a person you've connected with on the phone, you've connected with them via, you know, video chat, you feel good about them. They've got a good voice. They're pleasant. They're happy. They want to be there. They uh, have communicated properly. They've answered the right questions. They've, you know, they've done the voicemail. They've done the email. Now you're looking at someone that's, you know, pretty good, right? Some, someone that you maybe can, can consider as a hire for your company, for your team. It's kind of uh, like Chase, right? I have a feeling Chase is really good. Chase will probably <laughs> nail that. Right? Chase is taking notes right now. Chase. Thanks. Chase, um, dude, on your job, on your job description, Chase, what, what are you doing right now? What, what does it include? Because I, I know you're working for um, a couple of agents, right? Or one? What yeah, I am you? working for a couple of agents. Um, on a daily basis, I have three main tasks. Uh, the first one is just like what Andre said. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. What Kevin said earlier, I, I gather as many leads as I can. I lead generate at the very first part of the day. Um, I put a lot of effort into that. Uh, once I do, I dial those leads away like a madman and uh, make sure that um, the, the, the appointments are, I set are of quality. And then uh, the third one, I think it's the most important out of all the three is I make sure I follow up and I follow through with those leads um, to make sure that they would uh, show up on the appointment itself and also make sure that they would translate into a profit for my client. 
Nice. So are you following up right now with with a, someone's database or are you calling expires for sub owners? What, what are you being used for? What are, what are your services being used for? Um, it depends for, for, for clients who would uh, prefer for me to call buyers. If it's more profitable in their area, then I call buyers. But in a specific area, for example, if one of my clients in Temecula in California, um, expires and FISBOs are more profitable for them. So that's what I'm uh, focusing on. I use tools like Vulcan 7 to, to, to gather leads up, um, expires, FISBOs, and even circle prospecting. Uh, and I use oh, uh, wow. yeah, a couple of I tools think, uh, as well. One thing I want to say real quick is um, this is this is not an easy job. This is like a, it takes a toll on people. I mean, it's like it's mm -hmm. it's a grind. So I, from my experience, like you were talking about retention earlier, you know, it's it's really important to like acknowledge the effort that that you know someone like Chase is putting in every single day. I mean, it's very repetitive, um, and so it's really important to acknowledge that and to reward them, frankly. And so, like you know, we like I said, we provide bonuses, and you know, Christmas time comes, like we're you know, we're, we're helping out and stuff like that. So it's really, really important to do that and to appreciate the hard work that they're putting in. Um, and, uh, and the other thing, so like I find the people that we've hired, they're very much like wanting to deliver res great results for us. And sometimes when, when they, when they had that mindset and it's great, sometimes the quality, because they want to deliver those appointments, sometimes the quality isn't like always the greatest. Like they, they, you have someone that's on the phone and they're like, yeah, you know, I'll meet with them. And you're just kind of like forcing them. The, the, the ISA is like forcing them to, cause they want to deliver that great appointment. They want to deliver for their employer and stuff. So one of the things, just be careful when you're doing that, when you're, when you hire someone, what we do is we always ask to, that we tell them that we want quality, like make sure that this person that we, when we go to their place and they want to do a listing uh, presentation um, that they're going to show up. Like, make sure that we're not wasting our time. Make sure that these people are serious. Um, and that's really... I think, well, I think that comes down to, let's say, you or for Andre, for, for them, it's, it's really their, their coaching. And, and for you, Kevin, it's you from the top or your training that you do for other agents. And that's, what does an appointment look like? What does it sound like? You know, have really specific, have an outline specifically saying, look, if they say this, this is an appointment. Don't just send me anyone, right? right. So that right. comes, that really comes from us, right? So um, I'm glad that you do the training because I suck at it. Everybody would be an appointment <laughs> for me. And I'm, I'm glad that my out desk uh, helps us when, when we do the hiring too. For all. Well, let me jump in and say a couple of things too. You know, we have a client, for example, this is just in the last couple of weeks. We have a client who, one of our clients actually complained gave us a little bit of a complaint and we fixed it for her, but we gave us a little bit of a complaint that uh, her ISA from my out desk was being too aggressive. And the reason is because oh. she was, she was having pro some prospecting going on in some higher end neighborhoods. And I, you know, she just didn't want, she didn't, the, the, the aggressive tone of wanting to create a, um, an appointment just wasn't appropriate from her perspective for her branding for her marketplace. But the previous employment for that ISA was an agent who is, whose perspective was, you know, if they're on the phone, do everything you can to try to set an appointment, to close them for an appointment, you know what I mean? And that's what was expected. So all it took was just a little bit of adjustment of expectation and some communication. And one thing that, you know, that uh, Kevin kind of took the words out of my mouth on, and uh, but I want to highlight and, and underscore what Kevin said is showing, showing appreciation including them in your culture. If the only time that you talk to your virtual assistant is to give them an assi task assignment or to tell them they're doing a shitty job and you're not treating them like a human being, they're not going to, they're not, they're not going to be emotionally engaged. Right. And to speaking again to now emotional, uh, emotional intelligence, anybody on your team, virtual or in office, you, the first thing you need is engagement, right? The first thing you need from people is just engagement in your culture, in your process, in the mission, in your values. One of our most successful clients, Toral Schofer, she has three or four virtual assistants with us now. Um, you know, her one of her virtual assistants, Stephen, with us is her is her marketing manager. Runs all of her marketing from the Philippines. He's the one in charge of reading the mission statement and the vision every morning, or assigning it to a team member to read it. 
You know what I mean? So when people think about virtual assistants, to Kevin's point about, you know, showing appreciation, I want to take it a step farther and say, not only remember do you have to show them appreciation, but really include them in your culture. Include them in your meetings. Zoom them in. Skype them in. Whatever you have to do. Make them part of the team, and they will be valuable members who contribute much more than even what you hired them for. Ideas, feedback, right? Because they're going to be on, you know, they're going to be on the front line, so to speak, if they're in an ISA role. Uh, if you fail to, if you fail to include them in your culture and in your team, and if you fail to show appreciation, it's just like how you would react to that if you were in a job and somebody didn't appreciate you and didn't make you part of the culture. We're all humans. We all need it. So I really want to underscore and highlight what Kevin said there about uh, showing appreciation. It's really That's a really true. good point. And you want, you know, there you want people out that are out there happy to be working and happy to be helping and contributing to the team. And one of the things that we do, and I'm going to give three little quick tips here, um, is uh, first, I know my Outdesk, you guys are really good, good about accountability. When I was working with you guys at the end of beginning of every shift, there was an email that went out, start of shift. At the end of every shift, there was an email that went out and went down and broke down everything that they did. Um, one thing that, that we've implemented, we have four ISAs. And uh, for me, I'm like, I'm always wanting to know that there's something happening in right. my business. You know, I always want to feel like there's something going on. Otherwise, I have like an anxiety attack. Like if I feel <laughs> like I'm not hearing about what's happening, then, you know, I'm worried. Something that means nothing's happening. So we have a group text with our ISA team. And I would recommend everyone doing this if you have more than one ISA or if you just have one, have a group text, have a texting thread where you guys are communicating every single day. And what do you text through? Do you text through phone? Do you use Slack? What do you use? No, I just use my phone. I use my iPhone. We have a group text message, a thread that we've created, and all of, all the ISAs and myself are on that text message thread. And every time a lead is assigned, I know about it. They post it on they post it on the text message thread. So so and and so I know what's happening. And then the ISAs see that there are leads being assigned. So naturally if somebody is a little competitive, they're going to see that they're going to want to assign those assigned leads too. So it becomes a little kind of a fun game that we, we play. And, um, and it's, it's great way. It's a great way to stay on top and stay in contact with one another. Uh, so that's really important. One thing that we've used an app that we use, which is really inexpensive. Um, it's, it's called line two um, and line two. It's like 10 bucks a month. Is it you, L I N E and the number two L I N E and the number two. Um, you can download, it's an app on your phone and what it allow you to do is have basically another phone number on your iPhone um, that you can call out of and your ISAs can use. But what's really great about it is that you can see, every, you can log in and you can see every call that was made. You can see the duration of the call. You can see the text messages. You can even read the text message threads um, with Line 2. It's a fantastic app. Um, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without it. Um, it's $10 a month. It's very well worth it. Um, so we have each one of our ISAs using a Line 2 app, and they have their own phone number. And here's another thing. If you're in, you're in Florida, let's say, right, and, uh, and you have an ISA working for a virtual assistant, you don't, you don't want your the, – like the phone number should be a local phone number, okay? So it shouldn't be like a – outside of the area phone number. You need to have a local phone number. Line 2 allows you to do that. Um, of course, Google Voice does as well, but I find with Line 2, um, there's better accountability. Um, so those are the two, what I say, two things. There was one other thing. Um, the, uh, there's a, oh, this, this is going to take a little bit of time, but at some point I want to tell everyone what we look for every day as far as accountability, like what we expect um, from our team. Let me see if I can pull that up here real quick. While you're pulling it up, how many team members do you have, uh, Kevin? Team members? Yeah. How many team members? Not your brokerage, just your team members. Total, probably about 45. How about team members in your team? Well, so our company is run as a team. So we have – Oh, okay. Yeah, so with agents and virtual assistants, actually probably maybe close to about 50 people. Um, All right, let me write that down. Fifty people, because somebody wanted, somebody had a question about that. Andre, do you have anything to add while uh, while Kevin's looking for his thing? 
Well, while Kim was looking for that, actually, uh, Chase, why don't you share a little bit with everybody about kind of what's your what the expected number uh, your numbers are per per day or per hour with just expected dials, um, and kind of what what kind of expectations are you used to meeting for a client? Sure. Um, on a daily basis, I'm expected to do at least a hundred dials, and when I say a hundred, that's that that excludes. Uh, voicemails you know my, my calls going straight to voicemail or a wrong number or, or whatnot or maybe dnc numbers um so out of that 100 i'm expected to at least have two to three um quality Four. appointments when i say mm -hmm. quality appointments these are the people that would really show up and uh that when i say two to three there's about maybe the fourth, fifth, or sixth appointment that I said they might not show up or may, might not be quality leads, but at least you got them on the hook. Um, so yeah, that's the number I, I get for them. And then now, out of those- Are you talking sure. about calling expireds and for sale by owners or from your database, circle prospecting? What are you talking about specifically? Expireds and FISBOs, um, generally, Tristan. All right, now for everybody listening in, um, two to three appointments a day, it's going to vary in areas. I mean, if you're right. expecting two to three appointments a day in Beverly Hills, Malibu, Bel Air, I can tell you it's, it's going to be way off. Yeah, um, right. You'll have one to two appointments a week, if that, in my area um, for expireds and for sub owners. So be, be, be uh, cautious of what area we're talking about here. But Yeah, you got to understand chance, your market as the agent in it. Totally. It's all, yeah. it's market specific for sure. And I'm going to, I found the, I found the sheet. I'm going to go over some of the categories. So if you guys are listening and you want to know what our, what we use for our categories, you might want to write some of this stuff down. We, um, we have a Google sheet that we, we use and for some of our coaching clients, we, um, we've helped build, build it for them. So if anyone's interested, let me know. But so here's what we look for at the end of every day. I want to know, um, the number of calls that are made. How many contacts were made out of those calls? So when I say by contacts, I, I'm talking about um, like positive interactions, um, not just like, hi, this is John. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong number and hang up. Contacts is positive, positive interaction. And then how many appointments were set? Um, and then also how many assignments? So there's a difference. Appointment is if they set an appointment to meet with, with someone, that's one thing. But if they, we have two categories. So if you assign an agent, or assign a lead to an agent or uh, if a lead is assigned that means it's not necessarily an appointment it's that you know they want to talk with another agent um, or they want to talk with you and they want to you know maybe discuss potentially meeting or kind of um, set up a, a further com communication so we have appointments and assignments um, and then when we do assign a lead um, we want to know what source it is what source it came from we want to know the price uh, which agent it was assigned to. And then here's, here's one that's really, really good. It's interesting and it's helped us quite a bit is we, we want to know the lead quality. So we rate our, we rate the lead between one and a scale of one through five. And so five being the best and one being like not the greatest. Um, and so this, what this allows us to do is after a course of time, we can go back and we can see, all right, well, um, you know, Z buyer leads are, are the average Z buyer lead quality is a three versus a Facebook lead is a four. So maybe we should be focusing, focusing more on Facebook leads. So that, that could be some intel. Um, and then you want to know if it's a buyer, seller, and then the name of the, the, name of the client that, that, that was assigned and to which agent, if I said that or not, I don't know. But uh, that's kind of Kevin, a lot of info there. But so if anybody wants Kevin, it, if anybody's interested in, in just – having you help them train their VA. So like, let's say I get a, a virtual assistant at my out desk and they want to go to you to help uh, with deeper training. What, what's, uh, what's your email address? Sure. It's uh, Kevin at marker, like a pen, SF, like San Francisco. Dot com. Kevin at marker. Kevin at SF marker. SF dot com. Dot com. All right. Your, uh, And Andre, uh, I know a lot of people are probably interested in finding out more about my outdesk. Um, we have a a, pro, a discount for 
Lab Code Agents. I'm trying to find it here. I know you guys sent me the link before. I can tell you all about it too. Dude, go yeah, ahead and tell me about it while I, look so, the, while I look for the link. Yeah, well, while you're looking for that, uh, so typically we have a $397 setup fee, which again, as you guys, uh, if you guys remember, or if you just t tuned in, we pay that as a hiring bonus to the virtual assistant at the end of it anyway. So it's really for attracting and recruiting uh, star talent, quality talent. Um, but for lab code agents, if you guys call in or come on our live chat or email at us, if you use the phrase hashtag LCA, so just say the phrase hashtag LCA, uh, then you guys will get $100 off on the setup fee. So it'll go from being $397 to $297 setup fee uh, for anybody who's in the lab code agent community. Nice. Man. Um, and you guys, go to my, you guys can go to myoutdesk.com and literally just be able to find a lot of information about us. We got a lot of testimonials on our website. You can guys can go and check out um, what a lot of our other clients have to say. In addition to Tristan, you know, we've got a lot of other clients, Ben Kinney, Ken Wimberly, Lisa Archer, and the list goes on. So, uh, and of course, Tristan Ahumada as well. And we've got some great, we've got, we actually got a great video testimonial from you on the website as well. Oh, I have to check it out, dude. I haven't seen that one. I just, <laughs> I just found the link for the, for the lab code agent slash uh, my out desk one. I'm going to post it up to the top. So guys, anything you want to add now that we're wrapping up? We've got about five minutes. I, I wanted to hear Chase do a, a live back and forth, man. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> why don't you run hey, it, I'm Tristan? You want, why don't, you want to, Andre, are we okay with that? Yeah, go for it. Kevin, you're you're a buyer, okay? Wait, uh, yeah. Chase, I'm what do you want to do? You want to call an expired, a for sale by owner? You want to call a circle prospecting? What do you want to do? Let's do expireds because I, I know a lot of agents uh, uh, prefer expireds and fist bows over everything else. All right, Kevin, your home just expired, okay? And it's a million dollars, and you uh, you think your agent did a good job, all right? Okay. All right, go for it, Chase. Give him a call. Hello. Ring, ring. Hey, Kevin. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Who's this? Yeah, my name is Joseph, one of the assistants here at um, Lab Code Agents, and the reason we're calling you up is because we, we have a couple of interested buyers in your area, and uh, we're hoping to find out if yours is still available. It's actually no longer available. Uh, it just expired. Um, oh, it did? Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, but do you still need to sell your house, Kevin? I'd love to sell it if you can get me a million bucks for it. Hey, we'll try. We'll try our best. But uh, quick question for you, Kevin. Did you receive any offers during the time it was listed, though? Yeah, we did. We did. We received some offers. Um, our agent did a really good job in presenting them, but they just weren't high enough. And so we had to reject every single one of them. Gotcha. Okay, so I got the reason why I didn't sell. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, quick question, Kevin. Are you downsizing or moving to another city? We're actually uh, moving to another city. You are moving to yeah. another city. Um, okay, I got you. So I got where you're uh, – you're moving to where, by the way? We're moving to, uh, to uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. And how soon do you need to move to San Francisco? As soon as possible. If we can sell our home, we'll be, we'll be ready to go. Gotcha. All right, so things are moving. All right, I got you. Well, listen, Kevin, um, we got Tristan, the owner of uh, Lab Code Agents, and he specializes in selling homes that didn't sell the first time. Oh, I he think I've heard be. of that guy. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I think I've heard awesome, of him. Man. He's called me himself about 50 times. <laughs> well, there's a good reason for that. He's very good at what he does. Um, anyway, his number, but anyway. <laughs> well, let me tell you a bit about him. He will be in your neighborhood, actually, and I'd like to meet you hey, hey, for you to meet him in person. He can swing by for just about 15 to 20 minutes for a free listing consultation. There will be no obligations on your part whatsoever. And you're not going to be obligated to sign anything when he gets there. It's uh, simply and literally a free listing consultation, which will just take about 15 to 20 minutes. How does that sound? Is he familiar with the area? Has he sold a lot of houses here, or what? What does he know about the area? He, he is born and he was born and raised in the area, so he's pretty familiar with the place. Wow, well, that's awesome. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, maybe I'll meet with him for five or ten minutes and see what he can do. I'll unblock his <laughs> unblock his number. <laughs> Please do. Hey, uh, Kevin, mornings or afternoons can be there on time. What do you think would be the best time to visit you? Uh, morning is good, around 11. Around 11 o'clock. I got that. Perfect. I'll send the invitation to you through email. What's your email address, Kevin? 
Kevin at markgrasf.com. Got that. All righty. Perfect. Uh, I'll have uh, Tristan review all our notes. He'll be calling you tomorrow or the day after to confirm and introduce himself before he comes over tomorrow uh, at 11 o'clock. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you then. Thanks. Nice job, man. Good job, guys. That was good. It was smooth. Uh, so question for you, Chase, from somebody. How do you introduce yourself when, when you're calling for your clients? I uh, introduce myself as Chase, and then, of course, I brand the real estate, uh, I mean, the, the company of my client. Okay, good. So you'd be like, hey, this is Chase from Tristan and Associates, Keller Williams. Right. Just calling out. Okay, perfect. All right, guys, let me see if we have any other questions. Any other questions out there before we wrap up? Or Andre, you want to add anything? Uh, yeah. Um, one thing I'd like to add is if you guys are interested in the process, or if you're looking to hire somebody or you already have a team and you want to optimize your ability to hire, uh, one thing that I would suggest you guys go do is you can go download a free gift from my outdesk. Um, and what it is, is that it's basically three different things you can do. Um, you can download something we have called mod attract mod launch and mod hire. And what these are is these are step-by-step -step templates and processes for being able to find or attract the right talent. Then being able to go through a hiring process and kind of things you want to check for. Uh, Kevin did a really good job of breaking down a lot of those things. Uh, and then also you can then also, uh, we have a step-by-step -step process and templates for actually launching somebody. Oftentimes that's really where the, the, the failure is at, is in the launching and the onboarding and the integrating a new hire. So if you go to myoutdesk.com forward slash launch, again, that's myoutdesk.com forward slash launch, you can download all that for free and use those tools and resources for your business, regardless of whether you decide to uh, reach out to us or not. But if you do reach out to us, remember to use hashtag LCA to get $100 off on your setup fee. Question then on that, how are taxes handled? I saw that the IRS is now looking for portals like Fiverr, Freelancer, to send 1099s to those VAs directly. How is this handled? The way it's handled is that we, we're a subscription-based model, almost like a software as a service company, where you pay us a flat fee per month, and we handle all compensation, medical benefits, and all that on the uh, Philippine side. Um, your, your relationship is my outdesk. And so you just pay us a flat subscription fee per month, um, depending on whether you're part-time, full-time, or how many, however many team members you have. Uh, and also, I just want to point out, we're, I think, the only real estate virtual assistant company or the only virtual assistant company playing in the real estate space that I know of, to my knowledge, that actually pays benefits and medical uh, to our virtual assistants in the Philippines. So your team member will actually be truly taken care of and treated well uh, and be able to receive all those benefits. But again, we take care of all of that to you in the U S it's simply just a flat subscription fee with my outdesk. Nice. All right. So let me recap then we've got Kevin, uh, Kevin's here to help train your ISAs. If you need in-depth training, he does a great job. He's been a long time friend of mine and Andre, Andre, you, uh, you're one of the head people there at my outdesk. You help us find the ISA, hire them, in a sense, maintain them there as well. Right. And so I, I love the combo here. And Chase, dude, that was awesome. I loved listening to you. I wish I could have just asked you a whole bunch of other scenarios just to hear you out because I, I know people love that. Uh, one other question. Let me see what I've got. Um, will you be sending us a link to re-listen to this? Yeah, this is recorded. So what we're going to do is we're going to then edit it. Um, my, my RVA at... Lab code agents is from my <laughs> outdesk. <laughs> nice. So, you know, they're going to edit it for us. We'll edit this together. for you guys and you can send yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Kevin, you've got like two people interested as well. And somebody said, Jessica says, how do I hire Andre? <laughs> <laughs> Click on the link and ask for Andre, Jessica. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time. Take Bye, care. Guys. Bye. Bye, everyone.